Thanks again so much for tuning in to today's edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we're in Rushville, Indiana, talking with Mayor Mike Pavey and Brian Sheehan. Thank you so much for talking with us today. You're welcome. Thank you. So we're at the city center. What can you tell us about the city center? Uh, the city center for most of the locals uh, would be, they refer to it as the Princess Theater. Uh, so the Princess Theater, we, we purchased uh, about a year and a half ago, and our goal is to renovate this into what we're going to call the city center. portion of it will be uh, the Princess Theater operated by Wolf Theater. We'll also have Ivy Tech, a learning center, and then uh, upstairs where we are today will be the new city hall. Nice. And can you give us a little bit of history about the Princess Theater and what has happened here throughout the years? Uh, throughout the years, uh, most people will know it as the Princess Theater. Uh, it's 20,000 square foot building, but the Princess Theater is actually only 6,000 square feet of that building. Uh, the Masons have owned it for many years and actually operated uh, their club upstairs. And then for many years, the other portion was kind of a uh, auxiliary for the Taft Furniture Building at, uh, at the time. Um, but uh, that's pretty much what it had been in 19... I think it was uh, 1905 or 6, the Masons built a building. It burned down in 1913. So this building's actually been here since 1915, and uh, the theater has operated. It operated from 1915 to about 2001. Uh, I think, as I was saying, the Green Mile's the last movie I remember seeing here. Um, but uh, uh, a group got together probably around 15 years ago and started trying to think how can we revive the theater. Uh, the Ivy Tech portion and the City Hall has been added to that dream, uh, but, but Mayor Pavey, who was actually a councilman at the time, uh, he and a group of folks started to try to figure out how do we revive and bring back the Princess Theater. And what can you tell us about some of the different rooms that are in the Princess Theater right now? If you were to walk us through, what would we find? Uh, what we'd find right now is a, is a theater room Room, a big square box that doesn't have a lot in it anymore. Uh, it has a stage area, uh, which we do intend to use in the future as not only a theater, but to be able to do live plays, live music, uh, concerts, things like that. Uh, there's a, a, a 4,000 square feet area that will be the Ivy Tech Center. And then when you come upstairs, uh, which is, is a neat surprise, you come up and, and just huge 20-foot uh, ceilings, uh, big uh, or beautiful woodwork, uh, big rooms, uh, that area will be um, City Hall. All right. And Mayor Pavey, can you tell us a little bit about the process that has gone into developing this from the Princess Theater and to the City Center? Sure. Um, there were a, a number of different proposals we made throughout the years to try to get an interest from the Masons in the project. And until a year and a half to two years ago, we, we, we met with um, less than luck. Um, but it ended up that, that we it has it has changed a little bit. The original proposal we made probably eight to ten years ago was that the whole facility would be in some fashion or another a theater, um, like a bistro, and then the upstairs would be used for other arts um, interests. But when we got to looking at it, it became how do we how do we afford that, and how does the building afford it? Um, as we began to expand our ideas, what we found was that maybe the best use was to, to incorporate the city, city hall, because city hall is right now, some of the functions are spread out throughout the city, and we can't take them into the existing city hall because it's just too small. So it became, the, the thought process became, why don't we allow city hall to be in the building, which gives it the ability to provide some of the overhead for the Princess Theater and for the Ivy Tech. And that's what we decided was uh, probably the best plan. Uh, and fortunately for us, as that plan developed, the Masons decided that it was time for them to move to a different facility, a, a smaller, more affordable facility. So it all worked out that um, timing, timing worked for us. And so when it's all said and done, and we're thinking this will be finished in about 18 months or so? Correct. Okay. So when it's all said and done, what's the overall vision for everything that will be taking place in this current building? Well, I, I think that it's going to be obviously a multi-use, uh, a building that it has life in it from, the, from morning to, to evening um, and has entertainment. What, what we're trying to do is this is... This building is 
part of a bigger picture, and that bigger picture is to try to reinvigorate uh, and show interest in our downtown. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, incredible. it incredible. It breathes life back into downtown. It takes 20,000 square feet that, the, you know, the talk was this was going to be torn down. And, you know, hopefully you agree as you walked around today, um, there's a lot here to save, and, and uh, we really look forward to what it can, not just saving from our past, but to move us into the future. Because so far we've, we've done a lot of work, thanks to the street department. We've had a lot of work done on getting us ready and the de destruction kind of work. Uh, but now the, the construction part will be exciting. Well, it sounds like there is a lot going on in Rushville. <laughs> it sounds really, really good. Well, is there anything that either one of you would like to add? I'd say more than anything, uh, just, just keep an eye out in the, in the local media, see what we're going to be doing to be um, raising funds and awareness of what's going on. And uh, this is just one of many exciting projects going on downtown. Um, we, we won uh, the Stellar Award, which is a big state award, uh, which will put about uh, $18 million into our downtown as far as investment. We have a criminal justice center that's going to be built that I think is around that same uh, amount. There's a private investment of like maybe three to five million that we're hearing about. So, you know, in three to five years, you could literally see $45 million um, put into our downtown. And we think that's going to, one, help uh, ensure that the, our locals would want to stay here and more importantly, get people to think about why not move into Rushville? So keep that in mind. I will keep that in mind. It sounds like it's going to be a, an awesome place in just a few years. Not that it isn't already awesome, but it sounds like it's going to be even more awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Now, Brian, you were telling us something interesting about a man inside of the walls, kind of, sort of. Yes. Tell us that, uh, story. Uh, that When I give tours here to kind of show people and get it, get people excited about the project, that's the, that's one that especially the kids have, have a lot of fun with that. But there was, there was the, the remains or the, the, you know, he was cremated and uh, was entered into the wall uh, after his death and was there for some 70 some years. And when the city purchased the property, it's my understanding he was removed and is, is in safekeeping next door, uh, I think with, uh, with Monsters Mortuary. But uh, his name was Manley Pierce. He was big into Innocent and Pierce, which was a local furniture uh, company at the time, and was a major player in Rushville. And I think they were having some trouble with the lodge, and he offered to buy the downstairs. So at one point, he was the owner of downstairs. He paid for it in full, which then paid for the, uh, the Masons portion of the building, and for many years helped them uh, uh, be able to operate at a lower, uh, lower cost. But he was the one that worked to uh, uh, get the people to rent for the, the, the Princess Theater, to expand the theater. Uh, he helped get other businesses downstairs, try to make that work, and um, his reward for, for doing so was he, he got to, uh, at least a portion of him, I don't know if it was all of him, uh, remained in the wall for some 70 years, and I like to start the rumor that that there might be some haunted pieces here. Uh, you know, <laughs> people, know, people are very interested in haunted <laughs> places, so I haven't personally seen it, but I think it's possible. So maybe when City Center comes, you can offer some maybe haunted tours that, or something Absolutely, like that. absolutely. <laughs> Thanks again so much for tuning in to today's edition of History in Your Own Backyard. Today we spent time in Rushville, Indiana, talking with Brian Sheehan and Mayor Mike Pavey right here at the Princess Theater, which will soon be the city center. We hope that you enjoyed learning all about it. Remember, travel slowly and stop often. See you next time. Bye-bye.